Hi, I'm Rebecca Sanders, consumer reporter for the Arizona Republic and azcentral.com. I'm Ryan Randazzo, I'm a business reporter. And we're here to talk about installing solar on your home and the do's and don'ts, basically, the tips. So Ryan, how do I know if my home is a good candidate for solar in the first place? A couple of really simple things to think of first is, do you have t trees around your house and do you want to keep those trees? Uh, solar, uh, as the name implies, it requires sunlight. Um, if you have too many trees, you're going to really reduce the production of the solar panels, not save very much money. It's really probably not worth it. You also want to consider how old your roof is. You don't want to put $20,000 worth of solar panels on if you're going to need to tear the roof off in five years. It could cost you $2,000 just to take the solar off to re-roof. So it's good to do it if you're re-roofing or have recently put a new roof on your house. And another quick consideration is just how efficient is your home? Are, are the windows 70 years old? Are, are there big gaps under all the doors? Because then you're using a whole lot more electricity to cool the house and it's much more cost effective to fix all of those things before you look into generating your own electricity. Right. Um, so if I've decided my house is good to go ahead and I'm going to install, what's my next step? Just like anything, if you're going to put in granite countertops or a pool, you really have got a, you get a couple different estimates from different companies. Um, one, you could save thousands of dollars because one company might be less expensive than the other. But uh, more than that, um, you want to you want to see from the installers that they know what they're talking about, that they really look at your energy use, and they try and build a system for you that matches the amount of energy you use, not just put as many panels as possible on your roof and make the biggest sale po uh, possible. The installer should also have some idea of what utility you're in, is it Salt River Project or APS, and what rate plan would work best for you. And I think uh, people that get multiple offers like that are going to see that some companies are stronger in those areas than others. Now a lot of us live in HOAs, can they stop you from putting solar on your house? They can give you a headache like they can with most things, but they cannot prevent you from installing solar. So any rule in the HOA that would entirely prohibit you from installing solar is not enforceable, so they can't stop the, the project. And what about there's leasing versus buying? How, what's the difference and how do I choose? So leasing has become super popular uh, with solar because there's no money down or little money down leases. And then you make a monthly lease payment and you're reducing your monthly payment uh, to your utility company. Over time, over a 20 year lease, you're gonna save less money with that model, but not everyone wants to dish out all that money up front. Uh, since leasing has become so competitive, a lot of the companies that will sell you solar panels now offer loans, bank loans that sort of mimic that leasing model where you can get the solar installed and start paying a monthly loan payment for little or no money down as well. So those are a couple of things to consider. The other main difference with a lease versus a purchase is if you're going to resell your home. Um, the lease does not add value to your house because you don't technically own the equipment, somebody else does. If you sell the home, the new buyer is going to need to take over that lease. If you own the solar panels, they can add value. It's not a direct link. The, the way they uh, assess the value of solar panels is they look at how long is the remaining warranty and how much money are, you, is, are those panels going to save you on your electric bill for that warranty. So you might have spent $20,000 on the panels, but if they're only warrantied for another 10 years or 12 years, then they calculate how much money you save and uh, over that 12 year period and that's the value that it would add to your home assessment. Um, what about um, the savings on your electric bill? So it depends on which electric company you use, what rate plan you're on, how do you make sure you get the most in savings? That's a really important point for anyone installing solar. They need to understand how their utility treats solar customers and how that um, bargain works and what they credit you for the electricity that you put back on the grid because as your solar panels make electricity, a lot of that takes place during the day. Most of us aren't home during the day, so there's nothing using that electricity in the house. It all goes to the power grid and the utility has to compensate you for that. Also, utilities might charge uh, what they call demand rates. So even if you make a lot of your own electricity in the month, you can set a high demand rate by using lots of electricity in one given hour. And if your utility has demand rates, it's important for you to understand that even because you have solar panels, you need to watch your usage. And this is where those installation companies and having multiple people talk to you about the solar really comes in handy because those folks should really understand the best rate plan for how much electricity you use at your home.
Awesome. And also federal tax credits. That's a big part of making these affordable. Um, are those going to be going away anytime soon? Uh, they not only are an important part of making this affordable, but they're also something you hear referenced from the pitches of solar companies. They say the tax credits are ending, you've got to do this today. Uh, it's true, you get a 30% tax credit today, so you can apply that to your federal taxes, whatever you owe, 30% uh, of the cost of, this, of the solar. That is going to step down uh, starting after 2019, and you'll get less than 30% in subsequent years, and eventually uh, it's going to go away. It's never worth signing a contract today to take advantage of some tax credit um, because you need to get that uh, multiple offers to understand and make sure you're getting the best deal out there. That can save you thousands of dollars as well. It's, it's not worth rushing into something just to capture those tax credits. But there are some steps down in coming years to, to expect in the federal tax credits, Yes, right? that, that is true. That, um, in the coming years, there's going to be less uh, of a tax credit available for folks. Hopefully, the cost of solar continues to decline as well, so those tax credits are not going to be as important to making that decision to install solar. Well, thanks for those helpful tips on installing solar in your home, Ryan. And for more tips like this, go to heretohelp.azcentral.com.